Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Mark Watson and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Michael McIntyre. <laughs> we start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of American presidential candidate Barack Obama meeting <clears throat> Gordon Brown this week. But what does B O T E stand for? Is it that... Brown overdoes the ecstasy? <laughs> Is it Brown orders tango enema? Yeah. I think you he's, know uh... when you've had a tango enema. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is probably Britain's oddest twins exposed. <laughs> Is it, is it Brown impersonates cricket umpires? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not taking the game yeah. seriously. Take I, the game seriously, It's very Michael. difficult to get all the letters right. You're not getting the rules of this at all, yeah. are you? It's very it... hard to get the letters according to the words. That's that why what... it's a quiz! <laughs> is Gordon Brown watching Bill Oddie's tit extravaganza? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that is a TV show that needs to be made. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> is it Brown's old Todger explodes? <laughs> it, if it is, it's a shame that they didn't get that in the picture. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Mike. Mike. I, I've got one that fits, I think. <laughs> Do the letters match the words you're oh, going okay. to say? <laughs> is it? I thought today we could have actually had Carol Vorderman reveal the letters. She needs the work. Um, <laughs> Is it brown orders tree explosion? <laughs> tree explosion? <laughs> I think there's very little we can do to help you. <laughs> is it Barack Obama tours Europe? Yes, it is. Oh, 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 very good. Very good. The answer... The answer I was looking for is Barack Obama tours Europe. This refers to the presidential candidate's recent whistle-stop tour. After visiting Berlin and Paris, he ended his trip in Britain, where he met Gordon Brown, David Cameron and Tony Blair. There's something of the Messiah about Obama, though. Do you know yes. what I mean? You, you sort of look at him and you imagine him walking into a room. It's just... Aah! Just flowers appearing and rainbows and people leaping out of wheelchairs and women going, I'm pregnant through his eyes. And <laughs> you, you imagine Gordon Brown walking into a room and all you can see... <laughs> is a dog vomiting. That's it. <laughs> this thing is, there's, a, there's a big fuss because Barack Obama got, what was it, 200,000 people in Berlin? Brilliant. Let's not forget that yeah. the last time 200,000 people yeah. gathered in Berlin, <laughs> it was to listen yeah. to the most evil man in the world, David Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> This is what worries me about Barack Obama, though. Well, uh, you know, he, he might well be elected. We don't know. But he might be elected in November. He'd never be elected here because his slogan, his campaign slogan, is Yes, We Can, which is the slogan of Bob the Builder. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite ridiculous. Do you know that Gordon Brown gave, uh, they ex it, uh, gave him presents, Obama came, and Gordon <laughs> yeah. Brown gave him um, two books on Winston Churchill and two silver picture frames, which immediately stinks of, I forgot to buy my present, rap shit from the house. Yeah. <laughs> and then, to give him two books on Winston Churchill, if you're getting somebody a book, you need, you know, in case they don't like the book, throw in some variety. It's just classic Gordon Brown. I'll get him a book on Winston Churchill, and if he doesn't like that, I think well, we'll go for another one on Winston Churchill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's for dinner? Pasta. But if you don't like that, I can easily whip up some pasta. The man's a complete idiot. Do you know what, you know what he got as, in return? Well, nothing, because Obama left them on the plane Obama and left. bought it duty-free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unless, like unless he came in and said, this, in this suspiciously triangular box, uh, is a gift I've bought you. Yeah, yeah, it's a total run. But you uh, see I got you. <laughs> the thing we've got to remember about Obama, right, is he doesn't just appeal to black voters because they think that he's going to change society. He also appeals to American white voters who think that he's Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, let's face it, who is he, who is he actually <laughs> going to be up against? He's going to be up against Senator John McCain, right? A man mm. who came second to George W. Bush for the Republican nomination in the year 2000. What the hell have the Republicans been playing at? The best person they can find is somebody who wasn't quite as good as George W. Bush <laughs> eight bloody years ago. Do, do you know uh, McCain's slogan isn't too good either, actually? Is it, no, we can't. No, his slogan, <laughs> no, his slogan is... No, his slogan is, these oven chips contain 35% less... <laughs> uh, which isn't... <laughs> McCain is just too old, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. Do, you really want a, do you really want a president who could be killed by a mild winter? <laughs> it's going to be much more exciting to watch <laughs> Obama die 
What, what would you rather have? A president who's killed by a sniper on a rooftop three miles away or a president who dies from type 2 diabetes? <laughs> You can't help but imagine, like, that if, you know, Barrett wins, he'll just wander into the White House and it'll just be a swinging tyre and just Bush dressed up like Gollum going, Do I get to leave now? <laughs> I love the farmer. Yeah, I like him. Yeah. The farmer actually said, right, they said, Oh, have you ever smoked cannabis? And he yes, said, Yes, I have smoked cannabis. And they said, Did you inhale? And he said, That was the point. <laughs> I kind of man. That's cool. Do you know that John McCain, he was in a prisoner of war camp because he was shot down five times? <laughs> this, and they say he's a war hero. Does that make you a war hero or does that make you a really shit pilot? <laughs> Do you know McCain, McCain can't raise his arms above this? Do you know this? Yeah, yeah. Can't, can't live above, above yeah he's rubbish at charades. Yeah, what yeah. Kind of <laughs> yeah. No, he can do, he can do yeah. television. Uh, is, it a fort li- is it a forklift truck? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the football with John McCain and I spent the whole first yeah. half trying to get him to start a Mexican wave and he just kept saying, leave it, and I'm really yeah. pissed off. Yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> so for a second there, they thought you genuinely had yeah. gone to a football yeah. match. <laughs> <laughs> The weird thing is, the reason he can't get his hands above that is apparently that they, they held him in the prisoner of war camp like that. You'd surely think that... That would be the one thing he couldn't do. <laughs> you think he would walk how, around like that? How does he eat? Do, 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 well, can he, he, he can get you full. What? He goes to he every Halloween trough. party as well. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? How does he reach for? <laughs> how does he reach for glasses and stuff? <laughs> we have just. We are just now mocking a disability. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So we know. Just we all know that's exactly what's happening here, right? So, uh, uh, yeah, I know. It's, it's he's fair game, game cool. isn't it? He's oh. not. He's not fair game. Why what? is he? He's an old man with a war and He's American. I just... tell you what. <laughs> you know my nightmare is. My nightmare is that somewhere John McCain is watching this on a telly in a hotel room which is on a kind of one of those things that swings out and he wants to change it and he wants to stop watching people mocking him but he can't get at the television like that. (laughs) To be honest, I wish I'd never mentioned (laughs) it. It must have been tough though for Brian, must not it? Meeting somebody as popular as Barack Obama, especially this last thing Brown needed, somebody who keeps on saying over and over again, this is the time for change. <laughs> <laughs> Brown would have been well pleased. How, how, was, how was Brown's week? Uh, Brown's tricky. week was, to be honest, let's be honest, Brown couldn't get more unpopular if he recorded a song with James Blunt called I Like to Kill Puppies with Hammers. <laughs> Yeah, just get his, they get his said John Pescott time, yeah. came out, didn't they? John Pescott said, well, he's irreplaceable. We have no-one with the talent to replace Brown. <laughs> get a ten-pin. <laughs> get a ten-pin. Yeah, I'll sort it out the credit crunch. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll lower the interest rates. <laughs> but where do you make the coffee? You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's time, but the Tories aren't going like, to... The Tories are loving this, presumably. Yeah. They can't even attack Brown in the thing, cos mm. he's so weak. He so would actually look like bullying if they tried to make any point again. When they, did the, when they did the Glasgow East by-election, the Tories, they couldn't attack Labour, but what they wanted to do was to get as few votes as possible so that the SNP would beat Labour. So Cameron turned up in Glasgow and said, Scottish people are too fat because you drink too much. And it's all your own fault. So you just sort of turned up and went, hello, Scotland, you fat bastards. <laughs> but actually, Their party political broadcast in Scotland was just Cameron with Kenny Dalglish in a headlock. <laughs> punching him in the face <laughs> with the slogan, Remember, Scotland, we own you. <laughs> <laughs> so, amidst all these general calls for his head, uh, what is Brown doing now? He's on holiday. Yes, he is. He's, yeah. Gone, yeah. he's gone to suffer. Now, immediately, by the way, we're not saying he immediately went on holiday. In the car. They're, they're all on holiday now. It's a scheduled yeah. vacation. They attacked what he was wearing. Did you see that? They attacked... They're going, oh, you know, why is he not wearing shorts and a T-shirt? Yeah. What do they want him in, like, a Borat-style mankini? <laughs> Sorry, but I think that's the best photo I've ever seen of Gordon Brown. Absolutely. I think he looks yeah. really cool. I think he looks, I think like, he looks like George art. Clooney. It doesn't <laughs> what are we no. criticising them for? It's not like they can go and have a normal holiday. Yeah. You're not going to vote for someone who goes to Corfu and spit roasts an overweight club rat. <laughs> It 
it's hard to have a normal holiday. Like, if you heard, even in Southwold, they're planning a human chain on the promenade to yeah. protest against Brown. Imagine that. How lame is that? Oh, I'm not going into the promenade. There's a human chain. I think in this country, we're just really bad at, uh, like, kicking off. There's a fuel crisis, yeah. and I, I watched it on TV, and he said, um, here in the queue, there's talk of riots. <laughs> how can you have talk of riots in a queue? Uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> Right. We're going to riot, we're going to do it in alphabetical order. Oh, I nearly rioted out of turn, then. <laughs> I think that that's a brilliant idea, because I think holidays are supposed to be relaxing, they're just the most stressful thing in the world. Just leaving your home is so filled with stress, because <coughs> you suddenly feel that you have to unplug everything, you suddenly feel your television will blow up in your absence, despite the fact that no-one's ever heard of a television blowing up when someone's holidaying, you sleep safe and sound at bed at night, not thinking my TV could blow up, and then before you go, have you unplugged the TV? And you unplug everything in your home, except the fridge. We trust the fridge. What is it about the fridge? <laughs> you think the fridge wouldn't do this to me? At the end of that round, the points go to Frankie, you and Michael. <laughs> now we play a round called This Isn't Just News, This Is A Wheel Of News. <laughs> this game involves Michael, Mark, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners of the team I judge should produce the funniest stuff. Here we go. We spin the wheel. The first topic is relationships. <laughs> I think when you go on a date with someone, it's a bit like playing cards, isn't it? There's a couple of cards you let the other person see. There's also a couple of cards that you hold to your chest. Well, as you can see, I'm punctual and employed. I'm holding untidiness and sexual deviance. <laughs> I actually lost my virginity to my mother's best friend. It was my father. <laughs> it was the only time he ever told me he loved me. I died the other day in a lap dancing bar. He was making good tips. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I don't understand about sex. You know, like nudie calendars. Nudie calendars? Who's wanking going, I can't believe it's Pancake Tuesday? <laughs> hey, right, thank you. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. And somebody says, travel. Who wants to come in that? Russell. I, uh, I went to Hong Kong recently. It's fantastic. I was so giddy I did a gig there. I told my mum about it. I said, I'm doing a gig in Hong Kong. She's like, ooh, in English? Probably. <laughs> Travel is becoming more and more scary, do you find that, you know? But they, we look for terrorists now based on gender, ethnicity and behaviour. They must have come and go, are they shifty? Are they beige? And we... <laughs> We don't need help being racist. We're very good at it as a nation. It's horrible. You know when you get on a plane, you see someone who's vaguely foreign, you can't help but go, oh, God, he's a bomber. Oh, God, he's a bomber. <laughs> and you know he's looking at me going, fuck, he's in a boy band. Do you know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> don't chat about your lyrics. And we now have to take our shoes off in case there's bombs in there. It's fairly obvious who the shoe bomber is. I would imagine it's the man gingerly <laughs> approaching <laughs> like there. I love Russell. Travel. OK, that leaves it with Mark and Michael. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is hotels. Who wants to come in on that? I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a lot to say about hotels. I stayed in a terrible... I'm not allowed to mention it, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, such a depressing hotel. You know, you've got your Gideon Bible, your mini bar. Mini bar's a depressing word as well. It's a fridge, in fact. <laughs> you know, <laughs> If it was really a mini bar, you'd have tiny people being sick outside. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then, so, while I'm ranting, uh, these people ne in the next room, this guy's having a party. Who has a party in a budget hotel? Went round, said, please turn the music down. The guy said, mate, we're having a party. I thought, yeah, it's not that I don't understand the situation here. <laughs> I, I wasn't lying in bed at two in the morning thinking, oh, clinking glasses, laughter, deafening music, it's the mystery that's keeping me awake here. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Mark. <laughs> OK, Michael, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin <laughs> the wheel. <gasps> Somebody is. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> create an interesting tone for your Julia yes. Bates. Hey, uh, yeah, Wales. Uh, yeah, well, of course they have their own language. This is really the thing, and they um, are very keen for people of Wales to learn it. So they have it up everywhere, all the vocab. But they have it not only on road signs, but they also have it on the road. So I was driving into Wales, and it says slow, and then the Welsh for slow, which is a rough. And I, I, I didn't know this, and I thought it said slow Arab. I thought, whoa, whoa. Given the delicate global political situation, is this the best way to handle the terror threat? <laughs> Have there been a meeting at the Welsh Assembly? We've got to do something about Al Qaeda. It's only a matter of time before they make their move in the valleys. <laughs> Any ideas? No? Not one? OK, well, while we're thinking, let's slow them down on the roads. <laughs> slow, Arab. Put your hands where I can bloody see them. Thank you. At the end of that round, I'm going to give the points to Russell and Mark. Yeah. <laughs> the next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Mark, which category would you like? Ooh, legal news. Your category is legal news. The answer is 60,000. What is the question? Is it how many times has Max Mosley said to his wife, I'm just popping out to a fancy dress party? <laughs> Is it, what is my Polish cleaner's name worth in Scrabble? <laughs> <laughs> is it, how many times a day does Cristiano Ronaldo look in a mirror and go, looking good, I want to shag you? <laughs> is it, in what year will Jordan's breasts die? <laughs> if the government have confessed to losing 3,000 passports, how many have they probably lost? <laughs> One of them. Is it how many people right now sat at home are dressing their dog up in shades and a cape? <laughs> how many times in the last week has Gordon Brown said to himself in the mirror, I'm fucked? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how often will this clip be repeated on Dave? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be nice, isn't it? Is it um... just, just midnight. Just midway through this, a message to the viewers of Dave. Hello, 2024. Uh, <laughs> I've died 18 years now, <laughs> but Could still you... I'm here <laughs> doing this topical quiz. Hello, viewers of Dave. Could you please stop sitting, eating Doritos in your pants and do something with your fucking life? <laughs> Is it... What were the damages that Max yes. Mosley got from the news of the world? Yeah, I couldn't have sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 right. Well done. Very good, Andy Barton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the question <laughs> I was looking for is how much has been awarded yes, to Max <laughs> Mosley following his High Court win against the news of the world? Mr Justice Edie ruled that the paper had infringed his privacy over its sadomasochism story. Mosley is now planning further legal action. What's funny about it, did you see the way they were jostling him outside the court? I bet he bloody loved it. Yeah. He was like, yeah, that's right, talk German. <laughs> All right. Gen but generally, it was unusual for them to fight that case in News of the World. I mean, if it was ever the wrong person to try to humiliate, yeah, it was so a man for whom that was playing <laughs> yeah. into his hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he says his name has been cleared now, but... Nobody's ever going to forget this now. He could land on Mars and they were, oh, we'll go over to the Mars pictures with prostitute Shagar Max Mosley. <laughs> The thing I found funny about it is that thing of he had five prostitutes for five hours spanking him. They all had to speak in a German accent, but you feel sorry for the prostitute who couldn't do the voice because there must have been one of them just go, "Oh, you love that? Oh, that's this stuff. I can't do the voice. I'm trying, but <laughs> if, 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 if you know what I mean, time. this is the only one I can do, Max. I'm letting everybody down." <laughs> You've got to presume if you've been driven into prostitution, it's probably because you weren't a gifted voice artist. <laughs> yeah. He's gone to a lot of effort, hasn't he, to say he wasn't involved in a Nazi sex orgy. Yeah. His dad was Sir Oswald yeah. Mosley. He was almost definitely conceived at a Nazi sex orgy. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between and Robert Mugabe? Max Mosley admits when he's been beaten. <laughs> uh, that is almost like a top quality Christmas cracker joke. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But you, you feel sorry for his wife because there's going to come a time when they're going to have to have sex again and she's going to know what he's really into. So maybe she'll start small and just lightly chide him in Austrian, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just work her way up. I love, the way, I love the way that you, you regard Austrians as being like entry-level Germans. <laughs> 
they're you know kind of like, like German light. Yeah. Uh, that's a, when, you're, when you're not ready for a full German, just have an Austrian. <laughs> and, yeah. What a terrible sex drive he has. I mean, cos he, he just can't sit and crack one off, can he? He's got to get a stage manager, a choreographer. <laughs> in, in Scotland, if he tried to put all these prostitutes together, it would cost him upwards of a bag of chips. <laughs> Whose number is up this week? It's, it's Carol Vorderman. It is, of course, Carol <laughs> yeah. Vorderman. Silly old cow. Yeah, basically. <laughs> she got paid £900,000 a year. The people that won Countdown got a T-shirt and a dictionary. <laughs> That's true. And she's only there because people find... Old people find it comforting to see the same face. But I think, should they be comforted? I'd like to see the person picking the letters dressed up as death. <laughs> I'd like that to have stayed on, but just in a sort of couldn't care less half hearted yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got to get 10,000 with a 5, a 7, an M. <laughs> Why did she just be shuffling around in a dressing gown, just <laughs> swigging from a can? She imagines. She imagines she's indispensable. Oh, they'll never be able to find a younger woman who can use a calculator. <laughs> can I just say that I once got into a lift with Carol Vorderman, absolutely hilariously. I got into a lift, Vorderman was already in the lift, and she was in... She was at the numbers. And she was actually yeah. at the numbers in the lift, and she looked at me as if to say, I'm in control of these numbers. Uh, where do you want to go? And I think if you can't make a joke at this yeah. moment in life, you're in real trouble. So I just went, I'll have one from the top and five from anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and you got trapped in a lift. <laughs> I thought it was sad that they gave her 48 hours to sort of stay or go. Can I? Surely it should have been 30 seconds. <laughs> Virtually everybody here would do her job for what she was offered. Yes. How many people here, hands up, would do her job for 120 grand a year? Yeah. I'll just say, I'll tell you one person who can't answer that, and that's John McCain. McCain. He's just... Uh... <laughs> she did have a, a ridiculously easy job. The only woman on television who has actually an easier job is Deborah Meaden, who is the woman on Dragon's yes. Den who never invests <laughs> any money in got, anything. She's got no who money. sits there? She's poor. <laughs> she just, they just need somebody. For, <laughs> she she, she the sits there with the, with, the, yeah. with the prop money, looking at it, going, oh, "I wish that was real. I have no money at all." <laughs> and look, and every week, all she does is just go, "That's a stupid I'm idea. Out. You've insulted our intelligence." I'm out. The best bit about Dragon's Den is when they wheel on the genuine lunatic. Hello, dragons. It's about time bumblebees had slippers, <laughs> and you're <laughs> sort of sat there going, "Oh Christ, that, that's someone's granddad," and yet you can't not watch it because you know he's been in the shed when I'm a millionaire. These bumblebee slippers, granddad. <laughs> you haven't got a soul. <laughs> the thing about Kingdon is. Should we be encouraging old people to do more word puzzles? Could they do more <laughs> word puzzles? And, you know, they can't remember their grandchildren's names, they can't remember their grandchildren's birthdays, and yet they'll spend three hours a day doing anagrams based on cheeses of the fucking world. <laughs> Do you know who I was really panicking now? Because Des is gone and now Carol's gone. I reckon Dictionary Corner are shitting themselves. <laughs> Do you think they're unionised? I think they'll be very pleased to be unionised because it's, in fact, a nine-letter word. Yeah, it, is. Yeah. <laughs> it was... Yeah. That's quite yeah. good. That's That's really right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. At the end of that round, the points go to Frankie, Hugh and Michael. <laughs> and now here we go. Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone. So if you go over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is commercials that never made it to air. Masturbation. Are you getting your five a day? <laughs> ah. Worried about bankruptcy? Then why not paddle your canoe into the middle of the ocean? <laughs> Lidl's own brand shampoo, because you're worthless. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit me at 40 miles an hour, there's an 80% chance I'll die. If you hit me at 30 miles an hour, there's an 80% chance I'll live. Stop trying to hit me. <laughs> Poor and too lazy to cook. That's why mums shop at Iceland. 
This isn't just a gimp mask. <laughs> this is an S&M gimp mask. <laughs> Do your knickers feel uncomfortable on Try Bacardi Breezy? <laughs> you find flying boring? Fly Qantas, you might die. <laughs> <laughs> the Daily Mail. Racist in public, so you don't have to be. <laughs> I'm Fern Breton, and this machine took two stone off me. <laughs> it's a bacon slicer. <laughs> I'm John McCain. Why not buy my fitness video? Are you thinking of drinking and driving? Remember, the M20 is surprisingly quiet on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost your bags. We've lost your bags. <laughs> From Gillette comes the new sensor Uber 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 XL for that closest ever shave. In fact, this one slices your face like a potato peeler. <laughs> it's too close. Get the previous Gillette sensor. <laughs> it turns out we couldn't get closer than that one. <laughs> <laughs> 31 million names on three great discs. Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Now that's why I call a monumental cock-up, Volume 1. <laughs> Max Mosey doesn't do Nazi-themed orgies, but if he did, they'd probably be the best... <laughs> Nazi-themed orgies in the world. OK, next up again. Bad things to hear on opening the door in the middle of the night. Hello, I'm Dar O'Brien. I'd like to talk to you about Mock the Week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back from my canoe trip. <laughs> I saw a peeping Tom in your garden, but I warned him. This is my patch. <laughs> Uh, I'll come to fix your washing machine. You asked for a call-out between 12 and 5. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm afraid my cock is stuck in your letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm Max Mosley, and I've been a very naughty boy. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm afraid your husband's been murdered. Could I borrow a shovel? <laughs> Hello, I'm Gordon Brown. Just hold me. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to Russell, Mark and Andy! That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Mark Watson and Russell Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Michael McIntyre. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. <laughs>